red light have to be glowing? Nope, that's on. Okay, that's a good sign. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to the council for spending the time to hear our the, the results of our deliberations over the past years on BDCP. Um, but it's gotten pretty intense for the last six months or so. Um, to start with, to add on to what Marina said, when we looked at this, we really view the BDCP as a rare opportunity to really try to merge science with management in a very complex system in a way that is going to um, look at infrastructure and human resources, environmental, regulatory, institutional, and financial aspects of Delta management. Um, so this rare opportunity, we undertook the review with, the, with being mindful that this is a not common occurrence, that we should really put our all into it. And we really are mindful of the need to be constructive. So we really, when we identify problems, we're trying to identify issues with the documents in a way so that they can be addressed, so that it can be improved. So that's the basis, that's the mindset with which we brought to this review. And I would, I'll start with saying that in the, in the documents that we reviewed, we found a lot of things to admire. There was a lot of really positive things. We have a list of it in our overview. I'll, I won't go through all of them, but things like the background descriptions of the Delta environment, the, the context for CEQA, CEQA and, and NEPA um, are really impressive. They're detailed and yet they're clear. Um, there's a lot of information that has been pulled together that needs to be valued. Um, the presentation of the alternative water conveyance designs in CM1 we thought was comprehensive and well-balanced. Many of the resource chapters that we looked at were, are extensive and contain tremendous amounts of information, often overwhelming amounts of information. And when we come to some of our concerns, it will be about how to structure that so it was more accessible. Um, we thought that in many cases with anticipated impacts, there were appropriate mitigation measures or avoidance and minimization measures. And the set of models we felt, while it was limited, we thought that the ones that were used were employed effectively. Um, there's frequent reference to the importance of adaptive management, but as you'll hear, we're, there's some issues with how, whether we think it can be effectively implemented with the current mindset. But there is a clear intention to make adaptive management a centerpiece of the project. And there are in-depth evaluations of individual species, most notably two of the Salmonid species, but again, that leads into one of our concerns that there's not this, uh, the, the whole system effect, looking at the interactions among species as much as it should be. And then climate change and sea level rise are included in some of the analyses, but again, and that was good to see that, but at the same time, um, there are issues with how climate change is viewed in the overall project. Anything else you want to add about a good thing, Jay, before we go into that? Well, fun I, I have to admit, as someone who's spent too much, probably too much time researching the Delta, um, that I don't think there's anybody on Earth who couldn't learn something from that massive work. There's, I found a lot of things that I, were new to me, and I'm sure anybody, no matter what angle they're coming at or how many years they've spent in the Delta, will find something they can learn that they didn't know about the Delta. And somebody from outside the region finds a lot more. I will say that. Um, so let's go through some. We have sort of eight uh, major concerns. And the, the, the question is, is the scientific basis for the analyses and for the draft EIRS, is it sufficient? Is it good enough to support the uh, decisions that are going to have to be made? Um, you've heard this. I'm not going to take too much time on some of these because you've heard them before. Um, but these overly optimistic expectations about the feasibility, effectiveness, timing of, of the mitigation measures of the conservation actions, especially habitat restoration. Um, you'll, you'll hear that from pretty much everybody who reviews this, and you've heard it already twice today. Um, the issue of uncertainty, the project has uncertainties encumbering it. And one of the problems is that the level of uncertainty that's there is inappropriate, inconsistently applied. So some have more uncertainty, some have less. Um, but it's not been used, it's, they haven't used modeling to effectively bracket a range of uncertainties or how to explore how uncertainties may propagate through the system as, as a compound and cascade. The potential effects of climate change and sea level rise on the outcomes of BDCP actions are not considered. And when we asked DWR about that, their response was that the, the EIRS process is to look at the effect of the project on the environment, but not the effect of the environment on the project. And 
that to us, while that may be a, the, a legal context, that's just a, a big science issue that you have to be able to, and that, that applies to levee failures, floods, invasive species. Um, the effects of those actions on the project itself, we think, needs to be considered. Um, and the linkages and interactions among species, landscapes, and the actions themselves, we don't think there's enough attention given to that. Um, the analyses largely, and we've heard about this before, they neglect the influences of downstream effects on San Francisco Bay. Um, they don't consider, because it's outside the project area, the, the defined scope, they don't consider the effects of increased or altered water reliability on agriculture outside the region and what that might do to water quality issues, uh, et cetera. And the, the details of adaptive management and how it's going to be implemented are just not there. Um, they really, there needs to be more specific discussion about adaptive management. Um, situation, there will be situations where adaptive management is not appropriate or not even achievable, and that needs to be explicitly recognized. And there, but there, we can't leave everything to an adaptive management team at some point in the future to determine how we're going to do this. We need to make more specific recommendations now uh, or as soon as possible. Um, and then the issue of a comprehensive risk assessment, uh, we don't see evidence that that's been really applied in the system and that there is not a, there has not been the use of currently available scientific tools for decision uh, support, how to support uh, decision making based on technical information. There are methods for doing that and we think those could be beneficially applied to this process. Um, and then finally, the presentation, you know, it's got a lot of good writing, a lot of content, but uh, we suffered equally as well as the effects analysis uh, group panel with the inability to get to the information we needed. And this is one where we've tried really hard not to be really cranky in our review comments because <laughs> we have said this many times over the last couple of years, and it would benefit so much the ability of people to, one, review it, which was our main concern, but two, as, as you were saying, to use it, to actually use the information in a constructive way. Um, we, uh, we are bothered that, that has not been done more. We haven't, we haven't seen any real attempts to do, undertake some of the suggestions that we made early on in the process. Um, we've got more information. We, we've, in our overview, we, we uh, build on these um, major concerns. I don't think I want to go through those. I'd rather save that for answering questions that you may have. Um, and we do give some recommendations. We give our, our uh, eight areas where we see concordance, as, as you said, Alex. We're really happy to see the concordance, the convergent evolution between our comments. Um, some of our recommendations for uh, going forward and improving the scientific framework of, of the overall BDCP is to really work on developing these adaptive institutional, regulatory, scientific, human, and financial capacities. Um, the concept is there, the concept is supported, but the willfulness or the ability to uh, actually implement adapt adaptive management in this wide range of scenarios you've got, we don't see evidence that it's, it's, gonna, it's to be determined later, it seems to us. Um, we think BDCP science needs to be integrated with the Delta Science Plan. The Delta Science Plan is now, as of December of 2013, adopted by you, it's adopted by the, by the council, it's part of the Delta plan. Um, it really provides a framework for trying to effectively use adaptive management in supporting uh, decision making and, and management actions. So we think that there needs to be a concerted effort, much like the, uh, in the state water action plan, they now say the Delta science plan, we will do our best to adhere to that and we need to see that same level of commitment from BDCP. This issue of the habitat and the huge uncertainties around the 140,000 acres of protected or restored habitat and whether that can mitigate some of the impacts, everybody realizes how difficult that is and how hard that's going to be to make a clear call as to how effective that's going to be, but we need to get pilot projects with appropriate monitoring and evaluation going as soon as possible. Um, so that's one of our recommendations. And then again, this issue of using risk-based decision analyses, use some of the technical tools that are out there that allow you to grapple with some of these really horribly complex issues in making decisions and try to apply them and see if that helps inform uh, the way the decisions come out. And then finally, learn from the current drought. If there's ever a time when we need adaptive management and nimbleness and the ability to think and respond quickly, this is it. How are we doing? What would work better for 
for dealing with this situation and then figure out if we can take some of those lessons and apply them to BDCP. Jay, what would you add? That's a great summary. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.